This is Dr. Theo Harides. I'm a professor of neuroimmune medicine at Nova Southeastern University in Florida. And today we will talk about mast cells, neuroinflammation, and their involvement in pain. Mast cells are unique tissue cells of the immune system, but they're also found in the brain, where as you can see, uh, they actually are very vascular. You can see them pointed by the red arrows at the right hand side. And many years ago, I presented evidence that the mast cells act as the immune gate to the brain. In fact, they're found in many parts of the brain, especially in the meninges, as you can see in the middle panel, mast cells in meningiomas in brain inflammation. But they're also found uh, in association to nerves in many other parts of the body. As you can see on the left-hand side, uh, a recent review of mine about the mast cells in the autonomic nervous system. And as you can see in the caricature at the left-hand side at the bottom, mast cells can be activated by many triggers that derive from the neuroendocrine systems, and they can release molecules that can affect the nervous system and as we will see pain as well. In fact, as you can see at the bottom right, mast cells are very close to blood vessels. You can see in the blue panel, the vertical line is a blood vessel and very close to neurons. That's the diagonal line with a mast cell piggybacking on that line. And at about 300,000 magnification electromicrograph from our laboratory, you can see the granules of one mast cell labeled G and from another mast cell labeled G at the top, adjacent to a nerve ending where the little vesicles uh, are indicated by small arrows. So you can imagine molecules released from the mast cell can certainly affect the neurons. In this caricature, the mast cell is shown to be activated at the left-hand side by the classic trigger that allows it to be involved in allergic reactions, which is immunoglobulin E and antigen. And the review on mast cells, mastocytosis and related disorders in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, presents evidence about how mast cell can participate in allergic-like reactions or in what we now call mast cell activation, shown in another review at the left-hand side that I published recently, where molecules other than well-known histamine and tryptase are being released. When the mast cell is triggered by immunoglobulin E and allergens, it degranulates, as you can see at the left-hand side at the bottom, it explodes like a grenade and releases numerous molecules, some of which are the well-known histamine, platelet activating factor, kinase, tryptase, and tumor necrosis factor. However, the mast cell can be stimulated by other molecules through different receptors as shown on the right-hand side, such as high affinity receptors for neuropeptides or substance P, or low affinity receptors um, such as the MRG PRX2. It can be activated also by interleukin, such as interleukin 1 and interleukin 33, as well as bacteria, fungi, and viruses through toll-like receptors. In fact, we showed that substance P and the interleukin-33 can work synergistically to induce release of tumor necrosis factor, and they can actually increase the expression of its other receptors. All of these molecules released, as you can see on the right-hand side, are pro-inflammatory, such as cytokines, chemokines, and peptides, and those are released without degranulation. Now, there are numerous papers indicating the mast cells are involved in pain. We wrote a review many years ago about the role of mast cells in migraine pathophysiology, where basically perivascular mast cells can release molecules that can sensitize sensory nerve endings and transmit the uh, feeling of pain. Most recently, uh, this was uh, actually uh, reinforced by the paper showing about role of mast cells and in their interactions in trigeminal nerve and migraine headache. There are numerous molecules released from the mast cell, as you can see on table two. Uh, and because of this, 
There are numerous disorders that involve pain listed on the gray box that in fact involve both mast cells, neuroinflammation and pain. And a recent review described the role of mast cells in neuropathic uh, pain. Interestingly, the cover of the Journal of Investigative Dermatology some uh, years ago uh, had what appears to be clear indication that mast cells shown green are found very close to blood vessels shown in red, very close to yellow nerve endings. And in fact, uh, the receptor that I mentioned, which is a low affinity receptor for peptides, can in fact stimulate the mast cells and as shown on the right hand side, sensitize the nerve endings and uh, activate antidromic stimulation of the nerves, which reads the brain as pain signals. Uh, many molecules, in addition to the ones that I showed you, can activate this receptor, as you can see in the middle panel, and involve them uh, in migraine headache. But in the skin, as I already showed you from the cover of the JID, mast cells are abundant around nerve endings uh, in patients with regional pain syndrome, and the CQ receptor, which is the important receptor for mast cell activation, is also now known to be involved in persistent pain. There are additional papers indicating that the mast cells are involved in fibromyalgia, where they might also activate microglia in the brain and release pro-inflammatory molecules. Uh, they're also involved in central nociception, and recently, a bradykinin receptor was shown to be important in mast cell mediating post-operative pain. And finally, we had published that mast cells are involved in pancreatic cancer. And a recent paper uh, shows that perineural mast cells are actually responsible for the pain of pancreatic cancer and chronic pancreatitis. Which is quite interesting is that food allergy has been associated recently with pain in addition to other symptoms that are well known. In this editorial in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, it was uh, shown that histamine and maybe other molecules released from mast cells in the gut can stimulate sensory nerve endings and present as abdominal pain. Uh, we have shown that stress can also stimulate the mast cells through corticotropin releasing hormone receptor showing in the middle panel. And the picture from that paper indicates that the mast cells express receptors for CRAs. And with fluorescent antibodies, you can see that the mast cells show up like light bulbs. But what is interesting is that CRAs as you can see in the middle left, is involved in visual hypersensitivity. Uh, we showed that the mast cells are that are activated and they're positive for corticotropin releasing hormone and urocortin are found in endometriosis lesions. And finally, uh, bladder mast cells are increased in interstitial cystitis, bladder pain syndrome. And a recent paper indicated that mast cell uh, targeting therapy might actually be useful in chronic pelvic pain syndrome. Uh, we all, of course, uh, know all the horrible effects and symptoms of COVID and long COVID. Here's three papers talking about musculoskeletal pain uh, in patients with long COVID as well as headache in such uh, patients. And uh, we and others have shown that mast cells are involved, in fact, in COVID-19. And recently, I wrote a review about the role of spike protein stimulating microglia and mast cells in the pathogenesis of neurocovid, where the virals, <coughs> particles or the spike protein can enter the uh, amygdala, uh, alter behavior, stimulate mast cells and neuroglia in the brain, and uh, via the release of neurotoxic molecules lead to neurocovid. At the left-hand side and the bottom, you can see two recent papers of flowers where the spike protein could stimulate the mast cells uh, and the microglia. 
And in fact, this stimulation was through toll-like receptor 4, and another paper at the bottom uh, indicating that activation of TLR4 not only leads to pro-inflammatory effects, as shown on the right-hand side, but also increases expression of ACE2, the main receptor uh, for COVID, meaning that there is a cyclic uh, propagating reaction. Uh, at the left-hand side, you see a letter to the editor we published to the England Journal of Medicine, where we showed that the spike protein, together with AL33, has a synergistic effect in releasing interleukin-1, which is, of course, a very pro-inflammatory molecule. Now, what can we do about all of this? Unfortunately, we don't have very good drugs to inhibit neuroinflammation or mast cells. However, the natural flavonoid luteolin, that I recently called the wonder flavonoid, has been uh, reported to also have pain relieving properties, as you can see at the left hand side. We also showed that luteolin and methoxyluteolin can inhibit release of interleukin 1 beta from human mast cells. We also showed at the left hand side at the bottom that it can relieve the brain fog as well as chemo fog associated with long COVID or chemotherapy. And uh, also we present at least one case report where luteolin containing supplements uh, help with a patient with COVID and long COVID. Uh, luteolin supplements uh, are found uh, on the uh, web. However, I've got to stress that Algonaut is the only company that uses liposomal luteolin supplements using olive poma soil that increases absorption after oral administration about five times over that of powder. And a US patent was awarded to me for the use of such luteolin containing supplements in the treatment of brain inflammation. Thank you very much.